ugly. I'm Maggie the cat. Is Big Mom gone? She's gone. You know, our sex life didn't just peer out in the usual way. It was cut off short. Long before the natural time for it, too. When it's going to revive again, it's as sudden as that. I'm confident of it. That's what I'm keeping myself attracted for. For the time when you'll see me again, like other men see me. Yes, like other men see me. Oh, they still see me brick, and they like what they see. <coughs> mm -hmm. Some of them would give their... Look, brick. How high my body stays on me. Nothing has fallen on me, not a fraction. <laughs> Other men still want me. My face looks strange sometimes. But I've kept my figure as well as you've kept yours, and men admire it. I still turn heads on the street. While last week in Memphis, everywhere that I went, men's eyes burned holes in my clothes. At the country club and the restaurants and department stores, there wasn't a man I met or walked by that didn't just eat me up with his eyes and turn around when I passed him and look back at me. <laughs> what else is party for her New York cousins? The best looking man in the crowd follows me up the stairs and tried to force his way in the pattern with me. Follow me to the door and try to force his way in. Why didn't you let him, Maggie? Because I'm not that common, for one thing. Not that I wasn't almost tempted to. You like to know who it was? It was Sonny Boy Maxwell, that's it. Yeah, Sonny Boy Maxwell. He was a good end runner. But he had a little injury to his back and had to quit. Oh, he has no injury now, and has no wife who still has a latch for me. There's no reason to lock him out of the powder room in that case. Oh, and have someone catch me at it? I'm not that stupid. <laughs> oh, I might sometimes cheat on you with someone since you're so insultingly eager to have me do it. But if I do, <laughs> you can be damn sure it will be in a place and a time where no one but me and the man could possibly know. Because I'm not going to give you any excuse to divorce me for being unfaithful or anything else. Hey, I wouldn't divorce you for being unfaithful or anything else. Don't you know that? Hell, I'd be relieved to know that you found yourself a lover. Well, I'm taking no chances, no. I'd rather stay on this hot tin roof. Hot tin roof's an uncomfortable place to stay on. Yeah, but I can stay on it just as long as I have to. You leave me, Maggie. Don't want to and will not. Besides, if I did, well, you don't have a cent to pay for it. But what you get from Big Daddy, and he's dying of cancer. I think Mama just said he wasn't, that your work was okay. That's what she thinks. Because she got the same story that they gave Big Daddy and was just as taken in by it as he was. Poor old things. But tonight, they're going to tell her the truth about it. When Big Daddy goes to bed, they're going to tell her that he is dying of cancer. It's malignant and it's terminal. Does Big Daddy know it? Yeah, they ever know it? Nobody says you're dying. If they fool them, if they fool themselves. Why? Because human beings dream of life everlasting. That's the reason. But most of them want it on earth and not in heaven. <laughs> That's how it is anyhow. We don't have to make a cigarette. Don't want to burn up the whole place. At least not with May Hooper and the five monsters in it. <coughs> Forcibly as possible with the fact that you drink and I've borne no children. 
You know, I'm from the Big Daddy. I'm genuinely fond of that old man. I really am, you know? Yes, I know you are. I always sort of admired him in spite of his coarseness, his four little words and so forth, because Big Daddy is what he is, and he makes no bones about it. He hasn't turned gentleman farmer. He's still a Mississippi redneck. As much of a redneck as he must have been when he was just overseer here in the old Jack Straw Beat Cello place. But he got hold of it, and he built it into the biggest and finest plantation in the Delta. No, oh, it's not Big Daddy. Well, this is Big Daddy's last birthday. I'm sorry about it, but I'm facing the facts. It takes money to take care of a drinker. That's the office that I've been elected to lately. You won't have to take care of me. At least I do. Two people in the same boat have got to take care of each other. At least you want money to buy more Echo Spring when this supply's exhausted. Or will you be satisfied with the 10 cent fear? I'm planning to freeze this out of Big Daddy's estate because you drink and I'm childless. But we can defeat that plan. We're going to defeat that plan. Rick, you know I've been so goddamn disgusted in the court all my life. That's the truth, Rick. I must say it. I always had to suck up to people I couldn't stand because they had money and I was poor as Joe's turkey. You don't know what that's like. Well, I'll tell you. It's like you would feel a thousand miles away from Echo Spring and had to get back to it on that broken ankle without a crutch. That's how it feels to be as poor as Joe's turkey and have to suck up to relatives you that you hated because they had money and all you had was a bunch of hand-me-down clothes and a few old mold and 3% government bombs. Oh, my daddy loved his liquor. Shoot. He loved his liquor the way you fell in love with Echo Spring. And my poor mama, having to maintain some semblance of social position to keep appearances up on an income of $150 a month on those old government bonds. When I came out, the year that I made my debut, I had just two evening dresses. Two. One mother made me from a pattern and bow, the other a hand-me-down from a snotty rich cousin I hated. That dress that I married you in was my grandmother's wedding gift. young without money, but you can't be old without it. You've got to be old with money. Because to be old and without it is just too awful. <clears throat> you got to be one or the other. Either young or with money. You can't be old and without it. That's the truth, Brick. Oh, now I'm dressed, more dressed. There's nothing else for me to do. Dress, more dress, nothing else for me to do. <coughs> I know when I made my mistake. I'm right. I'm right. I thought a whole lot about it, and now I know when I made my mistake. Yes, I made my mistake when I told you the truth about that thing with Skipper. Never should have confessed it. A fatal error telling you about that thing with Skipper. Look, Maggie, you shut up about Skipper. I mean it, Maggie. You shut up about Skipper. You ought to understand that Skipper and You don't think I'm, I'm serious? You're fooled by the fact that I'm saying this quiet? Now look, Maggie, you're doing something that's very dangerous. You're, you're, you're fooling with something that nobody ought to fool with. This time I'm going to finish what I have to say to you. Skipper and I made love, if love you could call it, because it made both of us feel a little bit closer to you. You see, you son of a bitch, you asked too much of people, of me, of him, of all the unlucky poor damn sons of bitches that happened to love you. And there was a whole pack of them, yes. There was a pack of them besides me and Skipper. You asked too goddamn much of people that, that loved you, you superior creature, you godlike being. And so we made love to each other to dream it with you. Yes, 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 truth, truth. What's so awful about it? I like it. I think the truth is. I should have told you. You skipper that told me about it, not you, Maggie. I told you. After he told me. What does it matter who? Hey, little girl. Little girl, tell the folks to come upstairs. Bring everybody up. 
I can't stop myself. I'd go on telling you this in front of them all if I had to. Go on, go on, do what I'm telling you. Call them! Because it's got to be told and you, you, you never let me. It was one of those beautiful ideal things they tell about in the Greek legends. It couldn't be anything else. You being you, and that's what made it so sad. That's what made it so awful. Because it was love that could never be carried through to anything satisfying. Or even talked about plainly. Brick, I tell you, you've got to believe me, Brick. I do understand all about it. <laughs> now, I think it was noble. Can't you tell I'm sincere when I say I respect it? My only point, the only point that I'm making is life has got to be allowed to continue even after the dream of life is all over. I remember when we double dated at college. Gladys Fitzgerald and I and you and Skipper. More like a date between you and Skipper. Gladys and I were just sort of tagging along as if it were necessary to chaperone you. You want me to hit you with this crutch? Don't you know I can kill you with this crutch? Good Lord, man. You think I care if he did? One man has one good, true thing in his life. One good thing which is true. I had friendship with Skipper. You are leaving the dirty. I'm not leaving the dirty. I'm leaving the clean. I love you, Maggie, but friendship with Skipper was that one true thing, and you are naming it dirty. Then you have been listen, boy. You have not understood what I'm saying. I'm naming it so damn clean that I killed poor Skipper. You two had something that had to be kept on ice. Yes, the incorruptible, yes. And death was the only icebox where you could keep it. I married you, Maggie. Why would I marry you? I, don't bring me yet. Let me finish. I know, believe me, I know that it was only Skipper that harbored even any unconscious desire between you two. Now let me skip a little. You married me early that summer we graduated out of Ole Miss. And we were happy, weren't we? We were blissful, yes. It happened together every time we were loved. But that fall, you and Skip had turned down wonderful opposite jobs in order to keep on being football heroes. Pro football heroes. You organize the Dixie Stars, so you can keep on being teammates there. Something was not right with it, me included, between you. Skipper began hitting the bottle. You got a spinal injury, couldn't play the Thanksgiving game in Chicago, watch it on TV from Attraction Bed in Toledo. I joined Skipper. The Dixie Stars. Skipper was drunk. We drank together that night. All night at the bar of Blackstone. And when cold day was coming up over the lake, and we was coming out drunk to take a dizzy look at it, I said, Skipper, stop loving my husband or tell him he's got to let you admit it to him. Oh, man, my love. Oh, boy, he slapped me hard in the mouth. Then ran without stopping once, I'm sure, all the way back into the room with the Blackstone. When I came to his room that night with a little scratch like a shy little mouse at his door, he made that pitiful, ineffectual little attempt to prove that what I had said was In this way, I destroyed him by telling him his world that he was born and raised in yours and his world had told him could not be told. From then on, Skipper was nothing at all but a receptacle for lick and drugs. Who shot Pop Robin? Ah, with my merciful arrow. Miss me. Sorry. I'm not trying to whitewash my behavior. Christ, no. Brick, I'm not good. I don't know why people have to pretend to be good. Nobody's good. The rich or the well-to-do can afford to respect moral patterns, conventional moral patterns. I think I broke for it, too. Yeah, but I'm honest. Okay, can you put it for just that, will you, please? Oh, poor. Raise, poor. Expect a die, poor. Unless I manage to get something out of what Big Daddy leaves when he dies, I can't do the prick. Skipper is dead. I am alive. Maggie, the is alive. 